On Friday, the federal government announced that after substantial negotiations, a deal had finally been struck over childcare and welfare reforms. The proposals are complicated and confusing, and given the current distrust of politicians, guaranteed to disappoint sections of the community. How can providing the best for our children be such a headache? In Sweden, there's a different attitude. Family business is the most important business, which starts with a paid parental leave scheme that's so generous, if you're thinking of having a baby, you might want to move there. And it's not just for the mums. It's a cold winter's morning in Stockholm and two rugged up men aged in their 30s take a stroll through their natural habitat. Pushing prams and heading for the park. I used to have this image in my head of Scandinavian blokes as, you know, these tough Viking type looking men. Now I get here and I see young cool dads pushing prams down the street. So I was way off. That's the hipster style right now, I guess. <laughs> they look hard, but they're soft, I guess. Jonas Fried and Eric Hertzius are so-called latte puppets. I don't really drink coffee, oh, okay. but uh, <laughs> since I had a kid, I've started to have it as my drug of choice right. when, when I yeah. need to. Oh. Their dads, taking advantage of the Swedish government's world-class parental leave system, and they're loving it. I've read that women in Sweden find a man pushing a pram sexier than anything else. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> in Sweden, everywhere you look, there are dads with prams and more prams. Here, parents are entitled to an extraordinary 480 days leave that they can take at any time until the child turns eight. For 390 of those days, they're entitled to a generous 80% of their wage. The time is split between mum and dad to suit individual circumstances, but men are encouraged to take at least three months off, and most do. Are you being bribed by the government? Yeah, you can say that. But you're happy to be. Yeah, of course, of course. Because if it's not like that, it doesn't happen. It changes, it's, it's very effective to change the culture. It's a stark contrast to Australia's failing system. Here, by law, the primary carer, which is usually mum, is entitled to 18 weeks paid maternity leave at minimum wage. For dad, it's just two weeks. Childcare costs are at an all-time high. Are you all? And despite continual promises this week in Parliament about potential childcare costs and cuts... We're determined to enable more mothers and fathers to work the hours they need. There seems to be no long-term solution for Australian families. It's actually in a complete mess. People don't know what's going on. There is policy revision happening um, by the day. It's very haphazard and ad hoc. Professor Marion Baird is from the University of Sydney. New mothers could receive an extra fortnight of paid parental leave. She says even current debate to extend our maternity leave scheme by two weeks is a joke by world standards. Parents can't plan. We don't know what the future is going to be. We don't know what the funding arrangements are going to be. So I really think um, we're in a very sorry state at the moment. Do you look at the Swedish paid parental leave system as some great mirage off in the distance? We certainly look at it as a model and one that we would like to aspire to, for sure. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hello. Back in Stockholm, no, not like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Jonas and Eric are currently both Vega. on daddy leave. Vega. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Eric works in IT and has taken six months off to look after one-year-old Gertrude so wife Jonna can go back to work as a teacher. It's his second round of paternity leave after taking nine months off when two-year-old daughter Vega was born. You really get to know them on a deep level. 
And I think that will like last for your life as well because you get to know a personality changes back and forth, but it still has a core that, you know, is always there. His friend Jonas is halfway through a whole year of leave with daughter Misha. To know that you, you'll be able to stay at home and actually take care of the kid for a year and a half if you want to, it's definitely reducing the levels of stress, I guess. Do you think you'll have a second? Yeah, yeah. Straight up. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. No, no worries. How about you? Would you go for three? Yeah, probably we will uh, in a couple of years. I mean, maybe four, but... Maybe four? Yeah, my wife really pushes for it, but... <laughs> a lot of work, a lot more money too, huh? But uh, the system helps you. Yes. It's been a long and expensive journey for Sweden to get the shared parental leave system to where it is today. Back in 1974, when it was introduced, it flopped because the men simply signed over their three-month leave to their wives. But the authorities were desperate to make it work, so they introduced a use-it-or-lose-it policy, so the men had to take it. Decades on, the number of fathers taking up that leave has risen from half a percent to up to 90% success. There is a catch. Sweden has one of the highest tax rates in the world. Swedish workers are taxed anywhere from 32% to as high as 57% for the dollars they earn. What are your thoughts on the people who don't have children but still have to pay in excess of 52% tax. In the same way that uh, people who don't uh, have to go to hospital every day, uh, they pay taxes for others to do that. It sort of makes sense for everyone to chip in to make that uh, accessible to everyone. What a beautiful morning, Luke. The sun's shining. The wind is cold right in your face so you can't feel it. Does this make you miss home? It makes me miss home, and it's only like this for five months of the year. <laughs> so it's... Luke Grindle is an Australian father of three who lives in Malmo, southwest of Stockholm. How's life in Sweden? Yeah, Sweden's, uh, yeah, different to home, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> he runs two bike shops and took leave with all his kids, which worked well for him and his wife, Hannah, who's a florist. What sort of a place is it to bring up children? I think it's... I mean, the system obviously makes it quite easy to have kids. Well, I, when I was growing up, Dad worked and Mum mum was at home with us. And here it doesn't seem to matter as much if you want to reverse that situation or if you both want to work or whatever, you, you sort of can decide yourself. Sometimes my father would come home at 8, 9, 10 at night and be out of, out of the house at 7 in the morning. So it sort of... So you wouldn't see him? Yeah, exa exactly, yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm around the kids more. Uh, whether they want to be around me at the, at the same time is, is a different question, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I can be here. Aside from generous paid leave, when mum and dad do go back to work in Sweden, they're entitled to full-time public childcare at a cheap standard rate of $50 a week. The system supports you very well. You have uh, schools, you have daycares, and I don't think there's many stay-at-home mums, for example, because you go back to work. So you spend roughly $200 a month on childcare. Some people in Australia, in some places, can spend that on one day. Do you pity them? It, it's manageable for some, but uh, but the great, the majority, it's, it's not. The stress must put a bit of extra pressure on the family, which, you know, I guess it's uh, probably not needed. There's a nice seamless policy from childbirth through to childcare, through to school, which we don't have in Australia. The Swedish system is run by the government and ours is run by a patchwork of private enterprises. So we need to think about that in childcare. Where there's high demand, costs go up um, and that makes it very expensive for families. So we have a different childcare funding model. Um, it's been privatised, it's problematic, it's patchy. We know all those problems. We have to fix that. We're going to read Cinderella. Marion Baird says Australians pay more than enough tax to have a similar parental leave system as Sweden, but it's about overhauling how those taxes are used to fund a scheme that includes childcare. 
What do we need to do now to change things? Okay, first of all, we have to make a decision in Australia that we do want to support parents at work. Second, we have to integrate our childcare policy and our parental leave policy, and we shouldn't have a system where one is produced at the expense of the other. So the two are integrally linked. Thirdly, we have to say we're going to dedicate some money to that, and we have to look at our parental leave system and say, let's do more for fathers, and that will help the whole system um, rebalance. <laughs> How important is it for you to have this time? Very. It's a privilege. It's part of the bonding experience. But there must be some times when you're just thinking, oh, geez, I wish I was at work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe, but it's been such a while since I was at work, so I don't really, I can't really relate to that at, now, at this point. Of course, they're, everyone's screaming and there's like yeah, poop everywhere, and you're like, oh, my God. And you do need the alone time, I guess. Even though the Swedish dads have it pretty good, like all parents around the world, it's not all fun and games and sipping lattes. There's got to be a downside. The one downside, I guess, is you speak taller language all the time. <laughs> do the faces. Yeah. How much do you enjoy that 2 a.m. wake up when you've got to change a nappy? Not so much, no. You wait to see if uh, if Hannah will uh, get go up. first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see, yeah. <laughs> and you're doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, lying there still. So it's like this yeah. Mexican standoff. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it would also be kind of nice to, when you come home from work, to be like the traditional kind of man. You sit down by the dinner table, eat dinner, you talk a little bit with your kids, and then. You just sit down by the TV and drink beer all night, <laughs> and then you go to bed. And That's the, the Viking woman, way, right? The women do everything. That, that would be nice for a night here and there. Yeah. But that just be kind of boring. That would be kind of yeah. boring, I guess, as well. That's the only downside, though. It doesn't seem like that's too bad. No, it's not. No, it's not. What you want to do is just hang out with the people that you love, your kids, as much as you can. <laughs>